Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and return with having. Some people in the world might call me small potatoes. Some people like my elder brother might call me or my late elder brother might call me a small fry because I am like a runt of any litter. I'm the last child of a very long brood from my mother and father. And openly it's truthful that I am small in physical stature, as about as tall as my late mother, but my father didn't mind that when he was honored to be in my presence and I was honored to be in his stead. My late father was the greatest gift to my life. Not only was he a loyal, faithful, honorable man who worked a long time to provide for his wife and her into even into retirement so that she did not have to struggle in those elder years, but he placed money aside from his vacations by being a stable employee for General Electric for many years. Now, I don't share that by any odd occasion, but when I reached out to General Electric looking for a job, their HR director couldn't even be bothered to respond to me at all. How offensive that would be to my late father to learn that his company wouldn't talk to his son about a job. But that's okay because I moved myself into entrepreneurism at a very young age. I started my first business a very, very long time ago, much younger than most people that I know. And the truth is I did pretty well in babysitting. I did pretty well in house sitting. I did pretty well in just about everything that I did. Pretty well means enough to survive and enough to have security in life. But there's a difference when you're trying to move from security to significance, and those are the truths of life. For those of you who aren't so familiar with the three terms, survival, security, and significance, I encourage you to read Dr. John Maxwell and any of his works. I love that author, and I think he's a great man. But here's what I know. Even great men don't bother to help people. They try to help people at a corporate level. They try to help people on a not-for-profit level. But they don't often help one little person at a time. You see, all the Christians of the world can be piled up in a room, but they still won't give of their soul. They won't give of their heart, and they won't give in a way that's artful. What I'm talking about, of course, for me is my business. And my business isn't your business. My life isn't your life. But what I find absolutely fascinating about coming to this marvelous little city, this little mecca of the world that I'm in right now because God led me here, was how many pitiful people think they're a part of my life. I appreciate that people like to socialize. I appreciate that the people in the hood like to do a little bit of work. But what bothers me the absolute most is that the people who really think they're a jerk. And what I mean is that they think that their life is okay to be prayed by me, that their life is okay to psychologically abuse me, that they think that their life is okay to sexually assault me in the night. They think that their life is okay to play this new technology like we see in the uh, films like with Tony Stark to control a life, to shut a person down. And literally all those films that we're seeing coming out of Hollywood are giving us a preface of what life is to come. But here's the reality. American citizenship belongs to Americans. And if you came here unlawfully, my attitude is go home because my family, my Japanese family came here lawfully and became my family over time. I'm a man of 53, so I don't have to explain how long I knew people. I don't have to explain when I went places. I don't have to explain how I do people. But let me explain something to you. If you're a person who's living in the hood, I did not ask you to approach my life. I didn't ask you to be in your poverty and then presume that you're going to give me a few paltry dollars. I had a maintenance man or two try to do that with me. And I was pretty offended because their life is barely above the poverty line. There is one maintenance man that was stalking me and threatening to beat me up all over campus because I basically told him, no, I'm not interested in you and I'm not gay, so please leave me alone. He didn't stop his stalking of me. Now, I ran into some brothers, thankfully. And I said, hey, fellas who are college exchange students, could you help me? This man won't leave me alone. And they thankfully ran some interference for me. But here's the attitude I also know about living in this city that has a lot more folks of color and black people than I'm accustomed to. It's true. My affluent community had very affluent people who didn't bother with other people. They were married quite well in their community. They were good standing people of all different colors and all different nations and all different creeds and all different races. And that's a community that I've come from. This community is much more paltry, much, 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 much smaller, even possibly smaller than the community of my university in college. I'm not making fun. I'm just saying there's a different space and a different time and a different grace that is required in a community that's trying to thrive. 
And what I've seen is that this community is not trying to thrive. What I've also seen is this community is not trying to survive based on how they handle people with disabilities, how they handle people like me with narcolepsy and other things, and how they handle the elderly and that you can't even possibly walk on a stable sidewalk around here or get through the streets without getting your rollators caught in holes and potholes all over the community. It is incredibly exhausting to be an elderly walker in this community. But what I'm really talking about in life is how you play in life. And how you play in life is where you go in life and how you stay in life is where little you stay in life. But please, leave me alone if you're not a person who's actually working in an educated position. Please, leave me alone if you're not working in a sales-oriented job or a business-oriented business networking world. Because I am not interested in staying in a flea bag motel. I am not interested in producing any interest in drugs and well. And here's what I know about the shitbags in the force. They'll try and fuck you into making you look like that so they can take your property, steal your wives, and abuse your life. And some man has stolen my wife promised to by God to me. My next wife because my late wife passed into her, her realm of eternity. But when I'm talking about my family, I have the right to protect my family. But my family of choice is not my family of birth. And my family and birth are full of shit, liars, thieves, and cheats of my life. So forgive me, please, if I say sorry. I'm not interested in interacting with them because even my favorite sibling fucked my life into the ground, stole property from me, lied about me in records, and just thought she'd keep financially and sexually assaulting my life. So I apologize, but I didn't expect that from a family that came from my late father's estate. I didn't expect that of my siblings because clearly they didn't have enough time with my father who was great. And I certainly didn't expect my mother to not understand the ways of the world enough, my late mother, to understand the ways of the world enough that the people in the place that she lives are just as bad as any other impoverished person. You see, there's an elitism in that her life that she really didn't earn for her life. She produced a lot of children, but here's the sadness. At the jumping off point of life, at the time that you're about to stand in front of Jesus, your nose should be in a Bible, your nose should be in a Quran, your nose should be in some sort of religious item from across the world and over the land. But if you're not paying attention to the fact that you think that Jesus is just going to call you home and everything's going to go smoothly when you hit those pearly gates, you're full of shit. Because every fucking document from around the world that talks about God makes it pretty clear that A, there is an afterlife, B, you're going to be evaluated once you get there, and C, God's going to look at your life and not look at your good works or your good deeds, but he's going to say, how did you love your children, you motherfucker? How did you tend them, and how did you not discriminate against them, and how did you not abuse them, and how did you not sexually force them to be something that they're not?